Hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our bison talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the European bison here at Wildwood in Kent, so let's introduce them. We currently have two European bison. They're both male and their names are Hades and Orsk. They're about the same age and they were both born here in Kent. Orsk is the elder of the two. He was born at Howlett's Wild Animal Park on the 28th of April 2008, while Hades was born at Portlim Safari Park on the 13th of September 2008. Both transferred to Wildwood on the 13th of November 2010 and they've been with us ever since. Bison are the largest land mammals in Europe. They stand about two meters tall, measure about three meters in length, and weigh about one ton. That's the same as a small car. They can run at 30 miles an hour, so about the same speed as a small car, but fortunately they're not particularly aggressive. They belong to the Bovini family, which are basically the cattle. The family includes the water buffalo of Asia, the Cape buffalo of Africa, the yak of the Himalaya mountains, and all the types of domestic cattle. Like their relatives, bison are strict herbivores, meaning that they only eat plants. And they'll happily munch through grasses, herbage, and leaves from both trees and bushes. Bison are very distinctive looking animals. They have a hump over their shoulders. They have short, dense fur and a fairly long tail with a tuft on the end. Unlike camels, the hump is not a fat store. It's actually formed by huge muscles that give bison incredible power in their shoulders and their neck. Our bison here at Wildwood can fling heavy tree stumps around with just a flick of their horns. And in the wild, bison can survive through harsh winters by using their heads as snow plows to reach buried food. A bison's head is rather square, it has a wide mouth, a very distinctive beard under the chin, and relatively short horns. The horns of a bison and other members of the cattle family are similar to those of a goat or an antelope. They're the same sort of structures. This is a sheep skull and the middle part of the horn is known as the core. It is proper bone but on the outside it has a covering, sometimes called a sheath, of horn material. As you can see, quite a bit longer. And this is actually formed of the same material as fingernails, hair and feathers. It's known as keratin. When you look at a horn like this, it doesn't look very much like fingernails. But we have a bison horn that shows it rather nicely. On this side, looks pretty standard, but when you turn it over, you can see the individual layers, just like sheets of fingernail, that make up the horn itself. And the space here, that's where the bone core would go. There are two types of bison in the world today. The European bison, also known as the forest bison and the vicent, and the North American bison, also known as the plains bison and the North American buffalo. The European bison is rather slimmer. The American bison is broader and bulkier, and that's to do with where they live. European bison are found in the woodlands 
and the forests. And they need to be able to fit between the trees, that's why they're slim. North American bison live out on the open plains, so they can get as large as they like. You see exactly the same thing in elephants living in Africa. Those in the jungles are smaller and slimmer. Those out on the plains are the really big ones. Another big difference between the two bison are their legs. When you compare them, European bison have longer legs, North American bison have shorter legs. And this is because they have slightly different diets. They're both plant eaters, but North American bison are grazers and European bison are browsers. A grazer mainly eats grass, so having short legs puts your mouth closer to your food. A browser also feeds on bushes and trees, so being taller means you don't have to reach up so much. African rhinos show similar differences. The grazing white rhino has a wide, flat mouth, but the browsing black rhino has a pointed upper lip that can grasp twigs and leaves almost like a finger. European bison have something similar, but they don't use their lips. They use their tongues. Their tongue is long, muscular, and rubbery. It can grasp almost like a hand. It's fully prehensile. And you see exactly the same thing in the giraffes. European bison actually became extinct in the wild, and their recovery is one of the great conservation success stories. The last European bison in Poland was shot in 1921. And the last known individual of all was killed in the Caucasus Mountains a few years later in 1927. No more European bison left in the wild, and with only about 50 individuals left in zoo collections, they were literally on the brink of extinction. That's where Dr. Heinz Heck comes in. Dr. Heck had seen the danger facing the European bison, and in 1923 he set up a stud book for the European bison in zoos. Now, stud books are defined as official lists of animals within a specific type whose parents are known. They're vital for captive breeding programs uh, to be successful, as they avoid accidentally losing bloodlines or causing interbreeding. Stud books had long been used for dogs and horses, also cattle and pigs, but this was the first time a stud book was set up for a non-domestic species. And it worked. In 1929, just a few years after their official extinction in the wild, a small herd of European bison were introduced into an area of a forest in Poland. By 1964, there were over a hundred of them. In 2016, the official figures worldwide were 6,573 European bison, including Hades and Orsk, uh, with 4,472 of those in the wild. The more recent figures from 2019 say that we have about 7,500 European bison worldwide, half of those living in Poland and Belarus. It's a story I love telling to visitors, since it shows how modern zoos can help to save endangered species. European bison are known as a keystone species. Keystone is actually an architectural term and refers to archways. The stone at the top of an archway is the keystone. The other stones press against it, which holds the whole arch together. To quote National Geographic, a keystone species is an organism that defines an entire ecosystem. Without its keystone species, the ecosystem would be dramatically different 
or cease to exist altogether. As well as European bison, other keystone species include elephants, beavers, and large predators such as wolves, lynx, and tigers. Bison are a keystone species because they are habitat engineers. Their presence changes their surroundings. Mature broadleafed woodlands are very impressive, but only support a certain number of plants and animals. A mosaic of habitats is much better for biodiversity. And European bison create exactly that situation. When they feel itchy, bison rub against trees, which wears away the bark. Without its bark, the tree will die, and when it falls, it'll open up a clearing. Saplings and small plants flourish in the extra sunlight, drawing in butterflies, deer, and birds that dislike enclosed woodlands. Rotting wood from the fallen trees supports an entire community of its own, including fungi and stag beetle larvae, plus enriching the soil as it decays. And this is why Wildwood is part of the Wilder Bleen project, where European bison will be introduced to a secure area of the Bleen woods to carry out natural forest management. A common question about this initiative is, are Hades and Orsk leaving? No, the bison in the Bleen will be new individuals. Hades and Orsk will be remaining here as ambassadors for both their species and the Wilder Bleen project. So we hope that when you visit, you'll get to see Europe's largest land mammals here at Wildwood. Thanks for listening. <laughs>